um, in all seasons of life that we praise and we give Him thanks. And uh, so let's gather together on this last Sunday of the year and ask the Lord, would you um, help us to glean from 2020? Uh, I don't know about you, but I think some people are saying like 2020, good riddance, <laughs> you know, but I think God doesn't waste anything. And so I hope and pray and challenge you to think of things that God has taught us in 2020 uh, so we can really harness that and and ask the Lord would you use these character building trials and challenges as a springboard into 2021 let's invite him and ask him to speak into our lives as we worship let's prepare reflect on 2020 also uh, I'm sure it felt like a, a comparable not comparable I think uh, the wilderness 40 years of just wandering in circle in the wilderness before they entered the, the promised land and uh, it felt like a wilderness but let's pray that in the wilderness we still uh, had the manna God's provision we still had water we still had roof over our head and even in the wilderness our shoes didn't wear out and just as God's people really suffered and went through a lot, uh, that they, they would learn that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let's pray that we would hunger for the word uh, going into 2021 more than ever, more than the previous years, and that we would pray for one another, uh, that God would increase our hunger for him and his word. who do not know Christ yet and um, there's millions and millions of unemployed and needing unemployment benefits and just just a dire need that is out there that 2021 will be a year where our church can serve and reach out um, through evangelism through compassion through mercy let's pray for that
much more worthy than I know. I cannot imagine just how glorious you are. I cannot begin to tell all the love you bring. Lord, my ears have heard of you, and now.
She's coming up to share her testimony. Year 2020, um, uh, needless to say, it's been a year of great need around us. And uh, the privilege that we have to serve and to reach out has been multiplied. And so um, Esther is going to share about another opportunity that God is giving to us to reach out, uh, especially to children of inmates where they cannot uh, have a father or mother present during Christmas time and and it's, a, it's not just a hit, hitting and, and visiting Jesus who, 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 who said, I was in prison and you visited me, but we're also visiting children of those that are um, behind you know, prison doors. So uh, this is an opportunity to build relationship, not just give gifts and you know, hi and bye and see you next year. So she's going to share more about that. So thank you, Esther. Yep. Wow, thanks. All right, um, let me start from the beginning. Um, I was praying about how we could be part of reparation. Um, remember the summer, there's a lot of Black Lives Matter things going on. And also praying about how we could get more involved in our own local community of Elmwood Park. So Angel Tree came to mind. Uh, my parents' church had been involved in it, and I had a vague idea of what, um, what it was. So I researched it and found out that, next slide, it was a ministry of prison fellowship. Um, I think many of you are familiar with that. Um, and then that prisoners wanted to give their children presents at Christmas, um, but don't have an opportunity necessarily to do that. And then Angel Tree is the one that partners with those prisoners and churches, and the churches buy gifts for those prisoners' children and deliver them on behalf of the incarcerated parent. Um, the parent writes a note that you attach to the gift, and um, they also give suggestions about what kind of gifts their children would like. So I thought maybe we might get some, uh, some families in Elmwood Park and that we could bless and develop a relationship with. Um, that didn't work out, but anyway. Uh, so I checked with our Mercy Ministry deacon, Jason Park, and I talked to Pastor Joe, and they said, go for it. 
So I signed up for five kids. I thought, let's start with something small that if I can't, that if nobody else wants to be involved with, I can handle it on my own. So <laughs> um, I contacted the caregivers to, uh, by text and I just asked them if they wanted to participate um, as their uh, loved one in prison had suggested. Two of them said yes, and one said no thanks, and the other one never responded. So we went with two caregivers who said yes, and that was three children in all. Um, since it was only three kids that it ended up being, I talked to my house church, and they said they would help me buy the gifts for these children. Um, and that's what we did. And then Jason was also really supportive. Uh, he kept checking in on me, with me, like, how are things going? How's it coming along? And then uh, he also uh, offered to come with me to deliver the gifts. And I can't thank him enough because I was a nervous mess. And <laughs> he did all the driving, I did all the texting, so it worked out perfectly. Um, we met the first caregiver, next slide. And she was the grandmother of her, of the incarcerated um, person's child, right? So as you can see in the picture, the child is, her name is Trinity. She's eight. And her grandmother is next to her and her, her mom is behind her. Um, so it was funny because I texted the grandmother. She was the contact and she said, well, did you want to meet Trinity? And I said, if we can, that would be nice. We'd like to deliver the gift to Trinity. And she said, okay, well, I'll meet you this in one place and then we can drive there. Well, we didn't know that uh, she was going to end up driving us all the way across to the other side of Newark. Um, and when we realized it, we decided we'd just go with her rather than try to take two cars. So it ended up being awesome because we got to talk to her, get to know her. She was very talkative. She told us right away that she had been in transportation all her life, that she drove buses. So you could tell that she knew Newark very, very well. She drove like a pro. Um, but still, it took us half an hour to get to where Trinity lived. Anyway, we met Trinity. We gave her the gifts. We gave her her father's message. And um, we also gave her a Bible that Prison Fellowship had given us to give. Um, and they said, yes, we read the Bible and we'll encourage her to keep reading it. So um, anyway, by the end of an hour with the grandmother, we were good friends. And um, we were still in connection with her. So I'm really excited about that. Um, the other family that we went to is a completely different story. It wasn't negative, it was just very different. Um, it was hard to find their place. Once we found it, the two kids came to the door. They didn't have jacket, they didn't have shoes. So we tried to rush it and uh, we didn't get to say too much, but we gave them the gifts. They seemed very happy. Um, so anyway, um, we learned a few lessons from the second one as well as the first one. So um, for next year we can grow on what we've learned. Speaking of next year, I hope I gave you enough information to consider if you'd like to participate in any part of the process. Um, I'd love to put together a team of volunteers. There's um, a lot of different jobs that go into this, obviously. Um, there's contacting the caregivers, there's preparing tags that go on the gifts, there's buying the presents and wrapping them. There's delivering the gifts, there's praying for the families, there's um, possibly even doing a Christmas party uh, if things would open up um, for the children, and then um, also wrapping up everything with a letter to the incarcerated parent. So um, every part of the process counts. I know sometimes people feel like, oh, all I did was this, but every part is, is important. Um, so, it, please, don't wait until next year to think about this. Pray about it, and then send me an email or Pastor Joe an email about uh, if you're interested. Um, and then your response will also help us know if we can move forward with this, if we should grow it a little bit more. 
Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hester, uh, for just sharing that wonderful update. I think the best part of giving gifts, uh, those of you who have children, is um, when, you, when you give it to them, the, the smile, right? The response, that is precious. And uh, we get to, as Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And um, I do pray that this can become like a mustard seed where it's just so small, but it can grow into an oak tree and spread its wings and reach out to more people, develop relationships. And uh, what a, an opportunity that we have. I just want to pray for, for this ministry before we um, make a quick announcement here. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, even the small efforts that begins with the thought, begins with an idea, Lord, just... Uh, it just takes root, and Father, I thank you that this particular idea of angel tree um, was able to blossom, Father, through your uh, servant, through your daughter, Esther. Thank you for Deacon Jason stepping up and partnering in that endeavor. God, I pray that it would be like a mustard seed, that it can grow into a tree that can bring shade and shelter and just flourishing into uh, broken families, into broken lives, God, for we too are have been broken, yet you've blessed us, so we want to channel your blessing to others in need. Thank you, God. We give you glory and praise. Be with those recipients, those children. God, I, I pray that they would be prompted and nudged by your spirit to read their scriptures, uh, to have uh, local churches come and embrace them and to reach out to them as well, that we may build and extend your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, a couple of announcements, greetings to those that are uh, viewing from online, those that may uh, happen to uh, log in to our Facebook Live, we welcome you. Um, my name is Joe, I'm the pastor of Riverside Community Church. Um, just go through a couple of announcements. In your Facebook Live comment, just write, we're here, three of us, four of us are here. Fill out the attendance and prayer Google Sheet as well, and uh, we will pray for you and reach out to you as well. Um, we will have our annual um, New Year's Eve service on Thursday, December 31st. It will be at 11 p.m. Uh, till about 12.10 uh, mid, uh, past midnight into the New Year's. We'll spend some moment in prayer. We will have a hybrid, just like Christmas Eve. We will meet here, and uh, you could uh, join us online as well. And um, just at this time, we just want to continue to thank you. God has more than abundantly provided and that's why we can continue the outreach, continue to give and to reach out. So let's pray for our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the privilege of partnering with you, privilege to be called the body of Christ, the hands, the, the feet, Lord, the mouth, the ears, the eyes of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, that we can somehow incarnate your love to those that are broken, to those who are in need. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, to give in this season of great need, Lord, unprecedented need around us, God. I pray that we can be faithful stewards of all your blessings, Lord, that in 2021 that you would grant us uh, more uh, doors that would open up for us to bring the gospel, the whole gospel that would meet their spirit as well as their body, their mind, their emotions as well. Lord, to that end, use us. To that end, continue to bless us that we may be a blessing to you, those that are in need. God, I lift up, Lord, Pastor Howard. God, I thank you for this servant heart of God. I thank you for his reach to just personally love on our children. Lord, uh, through his just uh, sacrifice, through his tangible works of, of, of just driving to them and meeting them and, and just blessing them in prayer as well as in deed. God, I pray that as he preaches your word, anoint him, that will go forth in power and, and anointing of your Holy Spirit. God, may we be good soil, good hearts, where the sea will land and it will yield 30, 60, 90 fold of obedience to your word. God, be with us. May you be honored during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Uh, if we can lower this mic just a little bit, I have a really loud voice, and 
people at home, they could just lower their TV, but here, you're, you're stuck with me. So I want to save your ears a little bit. Uh, let's all turn to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 through 21, as we hear God's word. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 through 21. This is the word of the Lord. From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. This is the word of God. Let's quickly pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word today. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just soften our hearts. Lord, that you would open our ears, that you would open our hearts, and you would open our minds to receive your word. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will bless me. Lord, as I share, Lord, I pray, Lord, that... um, Lord, any word that just comes from me, God, Lord, let it just be void. But, Lord, every word that's spoken from you, Lord, let it be sown deep into the hearts. We love you. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here today. Welcome to our last Sunday of 2020. We made it. Woo! Woo! Yeah, we made it. Yeah, we could give a hand to that. We made it. 2020 was a, I mean, it needs no introduction, right? We, we lived through it, we, we went through it, and man, um, it, it, was, it was like a roller coaster. I think it's like, it's going to be concrete in history uh, for the rest of our lives. But, you know, I also want to recognize that, you know, like, even though we're excited that 2020 is over, I, I do want to recognize and, and the, the, the loss, uh, the pain, um, you know, the hurts that we've experienced in 2020, uh, whether it be, you know, friends, families, jobs, homes, dreams, opportunity. You know, and I want to say it's okay to grieve. It really is okay to grieve. Uh, in John chapter 11, verse 35, it's the shortest verse in the Bible. The shortest verse in the Bible. And it's Jesus wept. These two words are so profound and so deep because it entails so much. It shows that God, is, even knowing Eternity and experiencing eternity still understands the pain of loss. It shows that our God cares, and it shows that our God is understanding. You know, so, you know, this is not the message for today, but I just want to encourage you that Jesus wept, and you guys can weep as well. You guys can weep of sorrow, but we can also weep in joy. Amen? Uh, Today's message, you know, I want to share something to end the year off with, with, with a sobering thought. And for us to go into 2021 with much more victory and, and, and much more intention um, because we don't know what to expect. I think 2020 made that very clear. We don't know what to expect. But there is something that I believe we can do as believers, as people of God, there's something that we can do. And so today, the title of my message is The Power of Your Words. And I want to share right now that, we have, that our words have, have power. Our words have power. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 through 21, you know, King Psalm, he wrote this proverb, and he's known to be the wisest man that ever existed before Jesus. And he was considered the wisest man on earth. And he's sharing something profound to us today, and I believe God allowed him to share it because I believe it bears much fruit today. Verse 20 says, "From From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied... And he is satisfied by the yields of his lips. Our stomach, our life, are satisfied by the yields of our words that comes out of our mouth. The words that we say, the words that we preach, the words that we declare has very strong, significant meaning. And Solomon is saying that we are satisfied by it. That whatever comes out of our mouth, our lives are satisfied by that thing. And he uses the word fruit. He uses the word fruit. So when we think about fruit, I'm pretty sure some of us were thinking about strawberries, we're thinking about apples, maybe pineapple, watermelon. I don't know what you're thinking about, but when we think of the word fruit, it's something sweet, it's something good, it's something delicious. It's something, yeah, it's good. At the end of the day, who doesn't like fruits, right? I mean, if you, maybe if you're young, you don't like fruits yet. But when you get older, you're, you're going to realize you love fruits, right? 
And, and so when we think about fruits, there's always some, a positive association with it. But when we look at verse 21, he makes it clear that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Now this is a little scary right here because he's also mentioning that, yes, there's good fruits that we can bear, but there are those who love bad fruits. There are those who love bad fruits and they will enjoy it. They will enjoy it. It shows that death can also be a fruit in our lives. This is very scary. Because how many times do we declare words of death, words of curses over ourselves and other people as well? So what does words of death mean? I, 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 you know, if words of life includes blessings, I believe words of death includes curses. Like, literally, like, just cursing somebody out. Saying things like, you're stupid. I believe it's words of hurt, where people intentionally use their words to hurt others. And I believe it's words of discouragement where you use words to, you know, Esther did an amazing thing this Christmas. How wonderful would it be if I go up to Esther and say, that was a ridiculous thing you did. How much of a blessing would that be? It wouldn't be a blessing. So there are words of discouragement that we can use. And Esther, it was an amazing thing that you did. I was motivated. I was motivated as well. And to think this... You know, and, and to think about this, you know, some, I, I, I'm left to wonder and think, man, sometimes we are our own worst enemy. How many times do we speak these curses upon our own lives as well? And so for, 2020, for, the, for finishing off 2020 and the start of 2021, I want to encourage the church. Let us be more watchful of the words that we speak. As a church, let's be more watchful of the words that we speak to one another but also to ourselves as well. Let's be watchful of the way we speak to others, our friends, our leaders, our children, and also ourselves. James chapter 3, verse 5 through 10, he also talks about the power of our tongue and the power of our words. It says this, So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and birds of reptile and sea creatures can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of de uh, deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and our Father, and with it we curse people who, made, who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. James is talking about how devastating our words can be to people and ourselves. And he, and, he, and, he, and he associates it with a forest fire. Now, living in 2020, we experienced many different things. Uh, we didn't experience this firsthand. But we know of California, there were great forest fires. You guys remember that towards the beginning of the year? And also in Australia, too, there was that big forest fire. But do you remember the forest fire that happened in California? It was because of a gender reveal. Do you guys remember that? Like somebody thought it was a genius idea, right, to, in a dry season, during a drought, to set up an explosion to reveal the gender. The whole world knows the gender of that baby now, right? But how much great devastation did that small act cause? It destroyed, you know, like tens of thousands of acres of land, homes. You know, it, it, it destroyed that part of California, that small part of California, but yet it was so big. It was so big that we all were aware and we knew because it was a small act. It was a small act, something that didn't, somebody that didn't take the time to think about their word, like didn't think about their actions. And James is saying similar things as well. That we don't take time to think about the words that we speak. And with it, we praise God. It's so easy to come to church on Sunday. 
It's so easy to come here in this moment and give God praise. Why? Because we literally give you the words to speak. Right? We'll put up songs on the, we'll put up lyrics on the, 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 the PowerPoint. And all you have to do is just follow along with that. And we know that when we're in this building, that we ought to act a certain different way. And so we put on our Sunday mask. Right? And I don't want to admit this, but many times we do put on our Sunday mask. Right? How many times, you know, uh, couples, let's be honest, how many times on the way to church do you fight with your spouse? Am I the only one? <laughs> right? There, there are times where we argue because we're running late, you know, I forget something, you know, like there's, there's these different things and we just argue. And uh, John Wimber, you know, he, he, the, the founder of Vineyard Church, he said, who would have thought that was a normal thing? That's a Christian thing to do. You argue with your spouse and your kids on the way to church, right? Hurry up, get ready, right? And I know I'm going to have that with Shiloh as he gets older. And when we come to church, we put on this mask and we, and we give God worship. And it's awesome and it's great. But with that same tongue, James is saying that we curse others. And beloved, this ought not to be so. This ought not to be so. And he's saying that these words that we speak, it stains the entire body. That's crazy that it stains the entire body. Our words stain the whole body, setting on, us, um, setting on fire the entire course of life. James follows this verse by talking about that there's talks of Heavenly talks, and there's talks of demonic wisdoms as well. If you continue with verse 13 through 18, it says this, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show, uh, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in, in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. Do not boast and lie against the truth. Verse 15, this wisdom does not descend from above, but it's earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy, self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil things are there. But the wisdom that is from without partiality and, sorry, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing, to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What is James saying? That these words of, of, of death, that these words of curses, that these words of, 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 of hatred, of, of envy, of things that brings people down, he's saying these things, beloved, are demonic. There is no other way to say it. He's saying, church, when we don't be careful, when we're not careful with our words and we use our words to hurt others, when we use our actions to hurt others, beloved, it is demonic. But we have to declare heavenly truths to one another. And he's saying, he goes to far, I say, he says, do not boast and lie against the truth. You know, many times I believe, you know, we say things because we want to be quote-unquote real or we don't want to burn expectations and, or hurt, like, you know, break expectations. And I think there's wisdom in that. I believe that there's a wisdom in telling people how it is. But what is the intentions of the heart when you bring those words? You know, I remember Pastor Joshua and I, I just... Pastor Joshua from Australia, do you remember the, when he was preaching and he shared about that mother who always ridiculed her daughter because her daughter didn't match up and study to the level that the mother wanted? Do you guys remember that? The way Joshua, Pastor Joshua shared that story, it gripped me and it moved my heart because that mother, the same mother who cursed her daughter to the point of suicide was the same mother who looked at the daughter in the casket saying, my beautiful daughter, why did you do such a thing? And I know that a lot of people here, we were, we were, our, hearts were, our, our hearts were convicted in that message because how many times, even as a new father, do I speak death unto my son? When Shiloh doesn't listen to me, that's how impatient I am. 
I get angry. When my wife, Sarah, does things that, 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 that rubs me the wrong way, man, I, I do the same thing. As a pastor, I'm supposed to declare God's truth. As a pastor, I'm supposed to give my worship unto God. But man, with the same tongue, I, I, I know I'm hurting my son. At the same time, I know I'm hurting my wife. At the same time, I know I'm hurting people around me. And it bothers me because I, 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 I say I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me. I say things, I've been a Christian for this many years. I've been say, I say things like, man, I, I want to speak the truth. And James is saying, do not boast and lie against the truth. Because when we do these things, when we speak in a place of envy, when we speak in a place of anger, when we speak and do things and cause harm and hurt to other people, he's saying it is demonic and you're speaking against the truth. You are speaking against the truth. James is saying we ought to be careful with our words. This is God's word. He's saying we got to be careful with our words. Because blessing and life can come out of our words, but out of the same mouth, death and curses can come out as well. Death and curses can come out as well. And he's saying these things stains the entire body. He says it's, it's, it stains the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life. How many, do, how many people do we know personally that are not living up to their full potential, that's not living their God-given calling, that's not living in their purpose? When I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about any prosperity gospel. I'm talking about literally walking out as disciples of Jesus Christ. How many people do we know that are not doing those things because of the things that were said and done to them in the past? How many people are stained and forever cursed I don't want to use the word forever, but walking in that curse because somebody didn't take the time to speak words of life and words of wisdom and words of love. You know, there's been a recent awareness of, of bullying, and I, and I think that's great because a long time ago, bullying was only when, you know, people give you wedgies or pull down your pants or hit you, like, you know, the physical things. But there's also been awareness of uh, because of the, the, the recent, you know, the social media, there's just been a recent awareness of verbal abuse. And we call it verbal abuse, verbal bullying. And, you know, it's, it's never okay to speak down to people. And because of these things, I think we are more conscious and aware of how we speak to people. But do, are we aware of the verbal abuse, of the verbal bullying that we speak upon ourselves? A couple of years back, Sarah and I, we were watching this huge conference being done in California. It was called Azusa Now. Um, and there was about, I think, like 75,000 people. This is before COVID, so it was okay. Right? There were 75,000 people gathered in this coliseum, and they were worshiping from, 7 a. Um, from 9 a.m. to the morning to 9 p.m. at night. And they were just giving their worship unto God. And there was a session where they wanted to pray for people. Like, they were just constantly praying for people. And there was this one pastor who was praying for people who, who hurt themselves. Who hurt themselves. And they were saying, they were, they were praying, say, God, would you just speak to them? God, would you bring healing to their heart? And, you know, as, you know, this person was praying and Sarah and I, we were listening, we were praying as well. At that moment, Sarah shared something with me. Sarah said, you know, this pastor is praying for the people who physically harm themselves. So to bring healing to their souls. But it's not just about the physical self-infliction that we got to be praying about, but it is the verbal infliction that we put upon ourselves each and every single day. It is the wounds uh, that, is, that cuts deep into our hearts that we've spoken to ourselves. The wounds that cuts deep. Maybe you don't harm yourself physically. And if you do, I, there, there's no shame. Please seek help. Come to us. We want to pray for you. We want to we walk with you in that. But maybe you hurt yourself emotionally. Maybe you hurt yourself day by day by speaking down to yourself. And if that's you as well, beloved, we, we want to walk you through the truth of who Jesus calls you to be. 
You might say things like, I'm worthless. I'm ugly. I'm unlovable. I'm useless. No one loves me. No one wants me. And we say these things, and because of these things, we create a world of reality in our heads. And we're so far from the truth of who God calls us to be. We speak these words so passionately that these things become our gospel. These things become our truth. And then we become so far from God of who God is calling us to be. And beloved, I want to say, if that's you today, stop declaring lies over yourself. It is against the truth of who God calls you to be. And when we say these things, when we, call, when we say these things over our lives, beloved, it is causing a forest fire of lies to come into our hearts. A pastor said this once, I cannot afford to have thoughts in my head about me that God doesn't have in him. I'll say it one more time, I can't afford to have thoughts in my head about me that God doesn't have in his. Beloved, we cannot have thoughts, we cannot spend time, we cannot waste time to have thoughts about ourselves that God doesn't have about us. What does God call us? He calls us his children, Psalm 95, 7. He transferred us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. He called us a new creation. He calls us his masterpiece. He's called us to tear down any stronghold that brings argument and every pretentious that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. He calls us to take every thought captive and make it obedient to the word of God. What does this mean? God is saying, know who you are in me. Have your identity in me. What do I call you to be? What do I say about you? That is so important that we understand this. Because when Jesus died on that cross, he didn't die for nobody. He died for the glory of God, but he died because of you. You were worth the death that he endured. To say that, God, you died for in vain, you, did, you, 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 you wasted your time doing that. It, it mocks what he did on that cross. Now I want to say that constructive criticism and conviction is different from self-defeating talks. You know, there's a difference when I say, hey man, I, gotta need, to, I need to go on a diet because I, I need to start living a healthy lifestyle. Um, and, and this is really serious something about me because 2020, I, I let myself go a lot. There's a difference between saying that versus saying I'm dumb and I'm fat and I'm, and I'm ugly. There's a difference when you say I need to study and manage my time well to do well in school versus I'm stupid. There's a, there's a difference when you say, man, I, 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 need to get, you know, I need to get my life right with God. You know, I got to do my QTs. I got I to pray. I, I got to really follow Jesus. And, you know, by his grace and mercy, I, I, I thank the Lord that he calls me to, to run this race. Versus saying, I, 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 I can't do this. One is rooted in conviction. The other root is rooted in shame. There's a quote that says, conviction says that you did something wrong. Shame says that you are something wrong. And beloved, you are not something wrong. You are not something wrong. We all make mistakes. We have sinful nature. We all will make mistakes. You all make mistakes. I make mistakes. But you are not a mistake. Beloved, you are not a mistake. Ephesians 4.29 says this. Let no corrupt talk come out from your mouth, but only such as good for building up as, <clears throat> as fit the occasion, yet that it may give grace to those who hear. When Paul, Paul was talking to the church of Ephesus, and he said, hey, let your words the, the purpose of your words is meant to encourage. Even when you rebuke, it's meant to encourage. You don't rebuke to set someone back. You rebuke them to bring them forward. You bring correction to bring people forward. If you're correcting somebody to bring them back, 
Beloved, we got to check the intentions of our hearts. There's recently a, a book that I've been reading uh, by Ski Shilton. It's called The Rewired Brain, Free Yourself from Negative Behavior and Release Your Best Self. He's a, he's a doctor who's a, a psychologist. He has many degrees, but he's also a Christian. And this whole book that he's writing is, is rooted in um, this understanding who we are as, create, as created in the image of God. Who we are and created as the image of God. And, and he shared this idea that, you know, we humans, we, 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 we're, we're just prone to speak death upon ourselves. I, 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 maybe it's just part of the fall. That we're just prone to speak death. And when we speak death, we partner with lies that doesn't belong to us. We partner with lies. And when we partner with lies, what we do is we end up missing what God is calling us to be. What God is calling us to do. What God is calling us to see. And we continue to partner with these lies. And so what we have to do is, it's like, man, we have to find out who we are. And you find that person in Christ Jesus. You find who you are in Christ Jesus. Beloved, if you think you can find yourself by yourself, good luck. Because we've been trying and society's just been getting worse. You, we've been trying and, and, you know, we're the most medicated generation that ever existed. But when you find yourself in Christ Jesus, he will reveal the light. He will reveal the truth. He will tell you that you are adopted. He will tell you that you are co-heirs with Christ. He will tell you that you are forgiven, you are set free. He will fill you with the Holy Spirit who will convict you of the truth. He will convict you of your sinful nature, not to bring you to shame, but to bring you forward, taking you from glory to glory. Amen. So we find our identity, we find our truth in who? In Him. In Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20 says this, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorified God in your body. Paul, he's talking to the church of Corinth, and he said, man, this is so important for us to understand. You know, a lot of people, they use this verse to talk about things like, hey, because of this, you shouldn't get drunk. Because of this, you shouldn't do drugs. Because of this, maybe you shouldn't eat too, many, you know, too much McDonald's or Taco Bell. You know, that's for me, right? Or just chill out on the donuts, right? This is all about the physical things. But I also believe that this is talking about the words that we declare over ourselves. Do you not realize that God lives inside of you? Romans 8, 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. God dwells in you. And when we speak these things, do we not realize that we are also cursing God in us? Not believe that he is able to change us? Not believe that he is calling us to become anew? Not knowing that he is refining and renewing our minds? When we partner with the lies of the enemy, we are forgetting whose we are, and we're forgetting who we are, and we're forgetting who's inside of us. We ha when we curse ourselves, we choose not to recognize who's in us, but we also choose not to recognize who's in our fellow brothers and sisters. Beloved, we have to remember that this verse is not just talking about me, but it's talking about us. As the body of Christ, we all have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We are all temples of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we choose to speak words of love, it's because we're all, not, not only because we want to speak words of love to our fellow brothers and sisters, but we are recognizing who's in them. We're recognizing the Holy Spirit that's living inside of them. As believers, we have power in our words to partner with Jesus. We have power to partner with Jesus, and we can choose to speak biblical truth, encourage ourselves, encourage others. We can choose to create healthier habits when we choose to partner with Jesus. A bishop named John Beckwith from the 19th century said this, 
Plan a thought and reap a word. Plan a word and reap an action. Plan an action and reap a habit. Plan a habit and reap a character. Plan a a character and reap a destiny. I believe these words are very true. When we plant the word of God in our hearts, he starts to transforming and changing the way we think. He starts to minister and allows us to speak words of wisdom and words of life and words of blessings. And when we start choosing to say those things to others, I believe we start, we start putting the word of God into other people as well. Planting it into their hearts for them to believe this is what God really says about me. And slowly they will also, in, in hopes in return, will start reading the word of God as well and allowing the, the word of God to come inside them and renewing their thoughts and their mind, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in them. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 says this, I have called heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live. Choose life. This This is a choice that we can make. We can choose to partner with what God is doing in our lives. Or we can choose to grieve the Holy Spirit, ignore what God is calling us to do, ignoring the conviction that God is putting on our hearts, ignoring every single sermon that we listen to because we don't like the person who's preaching it. We can choose to ignore every single song we're singing and just make it come from our heads, or we can choose to actually live by what God is calling us to live by. We can choose to actually be obedient and humble ourselves to listen to the Word of God. Or we can choose to be self-righteous, envious in all the things that we do and choose death upon ourselves. So how do we do this? How do we, how do we start speaking words of life to one another? Well, number one, I, I, I think it honestly begins with a self-diagnostic. We, we have to do a self-reflection. And if you're really unaware, if you are somebody who chooses, you know, to, if you're really unaware of how you sound and the words that you choose, I'm going to challenge you guys to record yourself for a month. See how you interact with your family. See how you interact in traffic when you're by yourself on that road. Record yourself and play it back and really listen to yourself and take an honest inventory. Don't, and don't, don't be naive. Don't be like, oh, yeah, everybody does that. No, like really... And the second thing you guys can do is repent. Beloved, repentance is a beautiful thing. Repentance is a beautiful thing because it brings us back to God. It brings us back. It's a turning away from the old thing and it's turning to Him. So repentance is a beautiful thing. Number three, like it says in the book of James, pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. If wisdom is what you lack, pray for it. Ask for it. God is a giver. Amen? He wants to give it to you. He wants to give you wisdom. Uh, Number four is read the word and and spend time with him. Uh, Not just on Sundays. (laughs) If this is your only time of reading God's word, uh, beloved, let's let's pick up a challenge. (laughs) But I believe the only way we can truly love others, if, if, if there's a saying, right, hurt people, hurt others, I believe loved people can love others. And the only way we can truly feel loved is if we experience the love of God in our lives each and every single day. And number five is reconcile and set up accountability. I think that's important. Uh, You know, I do want to challenge, you know, spouses, if you guys can challenge each other and keep each other accountable, um, do it. But it's hard. (laughs) And so, you know, I, I believe in men's group. I believe in women's group. We're all part of a house church. If you're not part of a house church, get plugged into a house church. It's not too late. Reach out to Pastor Joe. Just say, hey, I, I think I need house church. If as, if as I'm sharing this message, and if you look back in 2020, you're like, man, this is something that is, if this is something that you realize that we have to work, if you have to work on, that you need Jesus to come in, great. Invite Jesus in. Take action and plug yourself in. I want to encourage everybody to plug themselves into a house church. Uh, men, 
you know, gather one another, say, hey, how can we keep each other accountable to speak words of life and blessing upon our children, upon our wives, up- upon, you know, up- upon our church, each other? Wives, do the same thing too. Gather as a group and talk about how can we bless our husband, you know, how can we bless our, 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 our children, our, our family. And this is so important. This is so important. This is so important. 2020, what a year. But what is 2021 going to bring? What are the things that we've learned in 2020 that we want to make sure that we don't repeat in 2021? You know, I told myself for 2021, I'm going to be more careful with my words because I realize my words can be pretty toxic. My words can be pretty toxic. And, you know, I have to, and I tell Sarah, you know, when I humble myself and when I'm honest with myself, I'm sorry that I, I said those things to you. I'm sorry that I, you know, that I, that I, you know, somebody encouraged you and I feel like it's my job to bring you back to reality. Who am I to do that? It devastated her. And so I told myself, man, I want to just encourage people. I, I'm, of course, I want to speak truth. You know, if somebody's telling me, hey, P. Howard, you know, I'm drinking every single day, I'm not going to be like, hey, yeah, awesome. You know, I'm going to be like, hey, that's, bro, that's a problem, right? But I do want to encourage people. If somebody's coming up to me and saying, man, I'm, I'm full of shame, I'm like, no, no, no. Let, you're, you're not a mistake. You're loved. Why do we do all this, though? I believe the reason why we do all this is so that we can present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. To our living king. Beloved, we do this not for ourselves. It's for his glory. But you know what's the benefit of this? Is as we live for the glory of God, he is so gracious that it benefits us in everything we do. Living for the glory of God, church, it's, it's a win for some reason. It's not like we do it for his kingdom. But yet we benefit so much from it as well. So fix your eyes on Jesus. Make him the prize. Live for that glory. In everything that we do, in the way we think, in the way we speak, in the way we live, let's live a life of blessing. Let's live a life that speaks life. Let's yield fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, self-control. Let's turn away from the things of death and curses and let's look at Jesus. That is, this is my challenge as we end 2020 and we step into 2021. This is my personal challenge. This ain't the vision message of the church. This is just my challenge. Can we be a church that speaks and love well? Can we be a church that speaks and love well? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this time. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you, Lord, that you're the one that transformed us, God. You took us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God, we thank you, Lord, that you renew our minds and our hearts. God, we thank you, Lord, that you call us a new creation. God, we thank you that you call us your children, And Father, Lord, as we are just here in this moment right now, God, would you just renew our hearts once again? Lord, would you speak to us, O oh Lord? Would you speak to us words of love, words of blessings, words of hope, words of life? Let these words permeate deep into our hearts. That our thoughts will be renewed, God. That our words will be renewed. That our habits, our character, God, will be renewed. Father, I pray for reconciliation and healing that's going to take place. Father, I, I just break off every single lie and every single curse of the enemy that's been holding us. We bind you in the name of Jesus and we command you to leave. Father, we take every thought captive and we bring it to your feet. 
Father, we love you. We thank you. Jesus, we thank you that you love us. Lord, we declare Lord, that we will be a church, that we will be a family, that we will be a people that speaks blessings in life. In Jesus' name. texts, every careless emails, every careless snapchats, every careless comments, every careless feedback. And um, uh, I kind of sinned less this, this week because Pastor Eunice preached and Pastor Howard preached. I might have to keep that up because <laughs> it's scary. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me because it kills us. It kills and wounds us. So I pray that this coming year, and that's part of our vision for 2021. Uh, I didn't tell Pastor Howard yet, but uh, that's part of that. You know. So let's pray. Let's be a people of few words, and that our few words would edify and count and matter and give life. So let's do that this week and throughout this new year to come. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his countenance to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.